Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Oh my goodness, Sister Mary Grace, it's a gift story. Stay be with you. We're back. It sure is. We're back. Yeah, you're here. I'm here. You're here. Or we haven't we haven't perished in this no. desert. As it goes on, there's gifts. There's more. Oh my! There's God. always more. So much more, sister. Um, actually, yeah. There's so much life in my heart. Yeah. As we dive into episode six, uh-huh. uh huh. Diving in though to the fifth week of Lent. Yep. And just coming off of um, the Annunciation. Yeah. Um, uh huh. A week loaded, loaded with grace. And here we are. We're about to dive into the Gospel of Lazarus. I know. It's just when you think they can't get any longer. Oh my god! I mean, this one's awesome, but it's it's a lengthy one. It's a powerful. It one. is. You just want it to go on and on. But gospel, it, yeah. But before we do dive into the gospel, like even just thinking about it, again, I know triggered a lot of beautiful memories of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Lazarus did. <laughs> Lazarus did. Because, and again, sister, I don't it's about those. I don't know what you yeah. have experienced in the darkness and uh-huh. you know the caves um, of your own human experience. But yeah. as kids, see, in rural Maine, there's really like nothing to do <laughs> except so you find everything to do. That's it. I know that. Yeah, that's it. You got to uh-huh. go uh, just kind of jump around in creation and mm-hmm. make your own games. And uh, just just pondering actually the times where light breaking into the darkness yeah or you know wondering if uh life would come right <laughs> in a particular difficult circumstance yeah. and yeah. uh like okay so there's these giant like water pipes mm-hmm. underneath the roads they mm-hmm. would help with like road drainage yeah um and they were pretty long actually like sometimes you couldn't see the end of them uh-huh. and one thing that my siblings like to do is we would dare each other oh god to like crawl through these long like you could fit in them as kids, wow. you could crawl right through them, and there's water, uh, yeah. but there was also, you know, there's space too, so it wasn't all water. <laughs> and but like you didn't know what was in there, um, spiders, like oh yeah, gestations, like, yeah, mud, you name it, like yeah. there was stuff in there. But we would dare each other oh, no. to go in and through these things under the road, under the road. And I would say these are some of the most oh, courageous gosh. moments yep. of my childhood, you know, like yeah, I'm kind of like good. elbowing your way <laughs> through like the muck and the grime and like coming out the other side and being covered with God knows what. Yeah. <laughs> like, But like the victory, actually, the glory on the other side of that tunnel was incredible. Um, or even like I loved running at night in mm-hmm. Maine, like Maine summers, there's nothing like cool. them. And I remember one p- particular night mm-hmm. um, because there's no street. Lights, there's no light pretty yeah, much at all. Yeah, how yeah. Do you not trip over? I well, mean, that's the thing, sister. It's in the middle, middle of the night. In the middle of the night, like huh. 11 p.m., I would go. And I would, I remember one night, it was like thick, that's thick awesome. clouds, even though yeah. I knew the, the moon, it was a full moon. And what was so powerful, because it was like really this running with faith. Like you, you can almost run with your eyes closed, too, because you can't see a darn thing. Wow. But like you find the middle of the road. And you just go and you just, it's really this incredible experience of trust and being held wow. in the darkness, knowing that, yeah, there's um, there's something to trust even wow. there. And I do remember this run um, mm-hmm. where the, the clouds parted just a bit and like having this incredible moonlight cut right through. And yeah. uh, I don't know, to see that contrast and in a sense to... Hmm. To have the intuition that there's life around me, there's life that's for me, even in this darkness, um, to have that intuition be uh, confirmed. Wow, that's in, awesome. In that gleam of moonlight. Uh, I don't know if you've had, yeah. I don't know, experiences like this or... Listen, I mean, it's amazing that we even survive our childhood sometimes. You think about these stories and I'm like, you got out of Maine? I mean, that's, every, every time I hear a new story, it's... We don't have as much praise cut for your vocation, but your childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you made it, sister. You, we would have had a good time, sister. <laughs> had you been there with? Well, me. honestly, it's not that it's it's not that far. We're pretty wild in Australia, but <laughs> I mean, my, I don't think in my childhood it, we did wild things even in adulthood. Like I, I mean, your drain pipe story is reminding me of, um, yeah. like you know, there's these obstacle course kind of sports that are huge. Well, they were huge oh, yeah. when I entered like Tough ten years mutters. ago. Yeah, yeah, things like that, right? Yeah. You know, you go in as a group and. 
And the point is not to like, uh, it's not about winning the race. You basically just need to survive the thing, get, right? <laughs> get get through it. Right. You just you just want to, I mean, you send a, you end up signing a death waiver at the beginning because you kind of do crazy things. It's like, <laughs> just, I don't know, like you literally run through mud, you jump in ice buckets for way too long and you're always in a team and, you know, you're climbing up walls, you're like throwing each other up and over and it's it's wild and crazy and wonderful. And um, yeah, so you're doing it as a team everywhere. And I absolutely loved it. But then there was this one obstacle that freaked me out mm. that I didn't, I didn't know whether I was going to survive. And actually, like, I stopped and I was like, I don't know whether I can do this. And it was probably similar to your drain pipe one, except this was like an adult one. And it was like this tunnel. So you were a team mm. and you could only go single file, but you had to go through this tunnel that went underground. Mm. Uh and popped up the other side. It was only about 40 meters, so it wasn't that long. But you had to crawl, but it literally went underground, and it was half filled with water. So, and you went one by one. And a lot of, I'm, yeah, I don't get scared often, but I was petrified. <laughs> like, I got halfway through this tunnel, and I literally started losing my breath. I was like, I am terrified. And it was complete, like, I've never been in in darker dark. <laughs> okay. It was so, I know I don't want to talk about it too much. Oh, it's getting scary. scary. It's not but, just scary, it's scary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but the only way you get through is you literally hold the persons in front of your heels and you kind of like crawl with them and and they're your lead. Anyway, I live to tell the story. <laughs> Praise be to God. I'm but, glad um, but it is. It's, it's one of the, and honestly, it was like I had to place all my confidence actually and all my trust, even though it was a little, a little silly and wild, a lot of fun. Like at that point, I knew that I needed to hold on to someone. Like literally that was... That was my guide. That was my direction. Um, and I was actually entirely dependent on those feet <laughs> in front of me. Oh. Uh, and they were everything. I just had to feel and hold on and um, I made it. Praise be to God. Way to go. We're going to bring something spiritual out of this. We promise. But no, it's powerful, sister. Because it sounds True, like, right? yeah, it's like following this this presence in front of you. Yeah. And holding on. Yeah. And um Gosh, it is. It's a dare. It's mm-hmm. a dare to trust. Yeah, uh, that you're going to get there. Yeah, and it's, you're going to pull through. Yeah, and and come through this. I mean, listen, I, I respect it. The drain pipes are scary. Oh yeah, yeah. As a child, as an adult, I mean, I mean I, places are scary. I'm with you. Um, mm-hmm. but no, I think it it does, sister. It brings us right into this gospel. I think so too. Of Lazarus, mm-hmm. and I can't wait to break it open yeah because i think what we're going to witness is yes this this god mm-hmm. who uh who resurrected uh-huh. and that that power uh he made accessible uh to us and into our baptism cool and uh it's a power That's that real touched lazarus's life mm-hmm. in a powerful way cool whoa should we pray yeah let's pray do you want to, do you want to pray i'm on it okay thanks in the name of the father, father son the holy, son, holy spirit. spirit amen, amen. Father, we uh, thank you. We praise you. We come before you as your beloved daughters, your beloved sons. We come before you as your beloved children. We pray that um, as we remember Our Lady's Annunciation, her yes, that we echo that yes, um, and that we echo that yes to your passion, your death, and your resurrection, the full saving event. Um, that won us our salvation, uh, that glorious resurrection that we have been baptized into. We ask for your grace to live in you, Jesus, uh, to live in your life and to live in the promises of that life, your peace, your resurrection, uh, that uh, in you, uh, darkness and death um, have no power, that you win that victory. We pray for graces of perseverance as we continue to lean into uh, this desert of Lent to claim the gifts that uh, you have for us. And Blessed Mother, we ask uh, just to be a mother to us now and take us into your mantle as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady is a desert. Pray for us. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So what do you think, Sister? Am I going to read this gospel? Yeah, I think we read the Australian accent last week. <laughs> you Amen. think you're in? Kick it back to the American accent. Uh, 
and it is. These are sisters. These are long gospels. Um, but it's like I, I love. This is why I love going to um, the monastery of Bethlehem mm-hmm. in upstate New York. Um, after the gospel is preached, there is no homily hmm. uh, because the word of God in itself, if we sit with it, if we receive it, uh, it will it will preach uh, cool. a homily to our hearts. And so, um, I'm going to spend this episode in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, sister. We that would be nice. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a few words, but no, that's powerful. That's how powerful it is. It speaks for itself. Okay, that's awesome. But there it is, yeah, that uh, for those listening, to, to ponder with us mm-hmm. and to pray with us as we break this, this gospel open. Mm-hmm. So a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one who you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to the end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here, and he is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, She rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, but he was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. 
but some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow, Sister Mary Grace, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's it's so beautiful. I mean, the Sister, I just, I mean, the thing that captures me right away is just that Jesus calls him by name, mm-hmm. Lazarus. You know, I think this struck me praying with this one more than ever before. I mean, I think at first that, you know, that he calls him by name, that we can't go over that too quickly, that he calls each one of us name, that he knows us. Um, and it's really, it's, it's this, um, it's this invitation to be known by God that calls us out from wherever we are. Mm. Um, it's this, uh, that God knows us all personally by name. Um, it's stunning. It's that like this, this is what Jesus has come to make possible, uh, that, that God is now familiar to us, that we can relate to him. Um, and this is what calls each of us to life, right? Not uh, that just we're capable of moving, that we're capable of living, but this life that brings life out of every place, any death that we experience or any any place that we feel stuck is when we're called into relationship. This is the eternal life we're called to. Um, and it's actually, it's, it's, it's responding to this invitation to know the Lord Jesus that actually brings me into life, a life that doesn't end here, a life that goes beyond uh, any limitations that I experience. It's, it's life now with Jesus. Um, yeah, I love this. You know, here Lazarus. I mean, we're on we're on a first name basis with God. It's personal. It's beautiful, sister. It's it's like outrageous. Yeah, I mean the the grace. Yeah, what struck you? The grace. Yeah. Well, and the promises, uh-huh. the gifts we have to claim here. Mm. I mean, and there's there's so many places. I actually know someone who's been yeah. through an entire eight day retreat. Cool. In silence, praying with just this gospel. I believe it. Is that incredible? Mm-hmm. Um, there are many, many mm-hmm. treasures here. Yeah, and um, I do. I I just love. I love so many things, but um, again, that personal address yeah. that you also see uh, between Jesus and Martha, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. like Lazarus. Like, yeah, Jesus is just going to call him up. Yeah, from the dead yeah. and. With with Martha, you see this process of coming to believe, you know, of professing one's faith. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love this beautiful dialogue, right? Like um, Jesus telling her, I am the resurrection yeah, right. and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Um, again, you see this very personal mm-hmm. dialogue. I mean... God himself confronting um, Martha. Mm -hmm. And then I love it. um, Jesus again telling her when she kind of hesitates, hey, um, Lord, uh, if we roll away that stone, it's going to stink. Okay, there's going to be a stench. My brother's been dead. It's gross. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's like, she's already forgotten, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But again, this invitation, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Like that line, I cannot tell you how many dark places, difficult moments that line has pulled me out of. I remember actually it was a cool. beautiful CFR holy hour and uh, the good shepherd leading the music 
That's they say it again and again. Really? If you believe, you will see the glory. I of love God. that. Yeah. Right? Uh, if you believe, mm. you will see the glory of God. And it's hooked my heart and has stayed in my heart. And yeah, um, what an incredible invitation to to us as we mm. continue to journey in Lent and a great moment. You know, next week is Passion Sunday. It's Palm yeah. Sunday. We're yeah, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a beautiful moment. Um, to say, do I believe? Mm-hmm. Do I believe that Jesus can do it? Yeah, um, that He can bring life and resurrection to yep. the places in my heart where I am have only been touched by or experienced death, darkness, yep. pain, sorrow, the places I feel irre- unredeemable, uh, the places mm-hmm. that are just like just awful, right? Like. Mm-hmm. I don't like this way. I don't like this struggle. I don't like this cross. I don't like mm-hmm. the suffering um, that I have to carry in this. Um, do I believe? Am I going to greet that with faith? Hmm. Um, and and actually to dialogue there with the Lord, to wrestle yep. like like he did with Martha. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, yeah, we're just like Lazarus. We're out flat, like we're on the operation table. Yeah. But sometimes we're like with Martha, and like mm-hmm. we've got to we've got to wrestle. Yeah, um, we've we've got to engage this question. Yeah, uh, towards claiming that resurrection. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's cause, like even as you talk, like I mean, even the beginning of the gospel. It's like these are these are people that knew the Lord. You know, the, I mean. Mary was the one that anointed the Lord with perfume. I mean, they were like, I mean, we're talking about bosom bodies, but yeah. the Lord Jesus, I mean, they're, yeah. they're as close as you get, you know? And uh, this, this, I mean, it's just beautiful that the church gives us this gospel. You know, we're, we're, we're in the like, what, the last quarter of Lent now. Like we've been in this for a good while now. We've, um, the Lord has gone places and there's always more to this journey. And even, I mean, even as you read this, I'm like, even just the faith of Martha. And I mean, to put this in perspective, like, Jesus has not, uh, in their time at this point, risen from the dead. You know, it's like he he's just given them his word uh, and the power of his word that Martha believes in. Like he hasn't, they haven't seen this yet. Um, and Jesus is saying, do you remember? Like I told you, you know, I'm, I'm the resurrection and the life. And she's like, yes, I believe in you because you said it to me. But I mean, like sister, I mean, what a, what a place we stand in. Like we know this narrative plays out in a week and a half. That um, what Jesus is speaking of in this gospel does is fulfilled in two weeks' time. We see it, and we're now living in a in a in a time of the church where it's like it has been fulfilled. It has been glory has come from death. Uh, death does not have the final say in any of the stories of our life. And I mean, we look and look. We can look at this narrative, and we I think we can all find ourselves at a different point in the story. You know, is is there an illness that's troubling us, or is am I confused about? how the Lord's going to show up. Is he coming? Has he answered my prayers? Um, am I at a time where I'm sitting down with Martha, one, I'm sitting out with Mary in the house wondering when Jesus is going to show up? Uh, am I in a dialogue? Is Do I see Jesus perturbed in my own confusion of what's going on? Um, am I stuck in the tomb? It's like this whole narrative all the way to the end of like seeing this brother come out of darkness, seeing life come back to a place that I thought four days was gone, over, done, shut. Mm. Like that Jesus was too late. Like, I mean, this is this is the Paschal mystery close at home, you know, and that we can we can all find ourselves in a different place of this and know the trajectory the trajectory of this narrative. We know how it plays out. Yeah. Um and we can walk with confidence into all these difficult areas of the journey, knowing that we can claim we know the end of the story. Yes. Yeah, that I love that, that glory, that glory will come. So we can go into these difficult conversations with the Lord, knowing that he will call that dead man out in all of us. <laughs> yes. Um, he'll call him out um, just by the power of his voice, by saying our name. That's awesome, sister. He didn't. He doesn't kick down the cave wall. He just calls us by name. Well, listen, as you're talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to do some pre-resurrection exercises <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> like tough, what does it look like? Tough mutter exercises yeah. spiritually. Let's do it. Hey, this is what I'm what thinking of. I don't want to go in that tunnel again. <laughs> <laughs> no tunnels. Actually, no, no, yeah. sort of, because okay, this yeah, and it kind of like right. because Jesus is like untie him and let him go, right? Okay, so yeah, you're right. Like he's gonna call us, he's gonna call us forth and forward to claim his gift of resurrection. But like, yeah. we can prepare ourselves, and like, this is what I would suggest: two things. Okay, you ready? Yeah, to you know, claim the, mm-hmm. claim our own Lazarus moment. Yeah, why not today? Hey, yeah, oh, 
Jesus might want to win some some big victories for you even on the journey in the desert. He likes doing that too. Yep. Um, but even to prepare towards, yeah, like let's let it happen. Okay. So renunciation and annunciation. Cool. Okay. So like, like that. Because at this point we know we've mm. kind of pulled up a few lies we're living by. Mm-hmm. We've we've noticed a few spirits that aren't about God mm-hmm. um floating around in our thoughts, in our um, you know, whatever, uh, our interior lives. Yep. And and to pin those suckers down and throw them to the foot of the cross. Yeah. Like seriously, like mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of fear and I throw it to the foot of your cross, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like it's yours. Turn it over. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of discouragement. Um, mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self-loathing, self-contempt, mm-hmm. um, the spirit of criticism. I throw it to the foot of your cross, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, I ask you to to in, to consume it uh, in the fire of your love, mm-hmm. however you want to do it, but in his name to renounce that. And then conversely, to announce mm-hmm. who who are you in truth? In the name of Jesus, I announce I am a beloved daughter of the Father. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I announce that I have been made in the image and likeness of God, good, precious, mm-hmm. that my life is sacred, um, that I am a gift. Um, in the name of Jesus, yeah, I announce my life has purpose and meaning, and I claim that, claim that in your name, Jesus, um, to exercise throughout the day. As you notice these things, um, to accept mm-hmm. what is good, that there is feasting to do, and to reject that which is not about God. Mm-hmm. And, and this actually, yes, starts loosening those bonds. This, this gets us ready to receive oh, um, the life, he who is the life, mm. and the resurrection. Mm. What yeah. do you think? I love it. Sign best, me up. It's the best tough mother you're ever going to run. <laughs> yeah. It's very I fruit. love it. I, I love it. And it, and it's beautiful because, it. I mean, look, I mean, how does Jesus respond to this place of death? Like when it's like, what next? He's, his response is it's exactly what you're saying. He's like he's raising his eyes to God. He just raises his eyes and says, Father, like he stands in the place of son. I, I, you're reminding me, I just read a quote by Pope um, Benedict. He said, to be like God is to be son, is to be daughter. Like that's, 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 that's what it means to be like God. That's our dignity made in his image and likeness. Uh, we stand with Jesus at this point and we call out like, Father, thank you for hearing me in the midst of whatever distress, whatever place we are. It's, it's, I'm, I'm son, I'm daughter. And I'm, I love that. I'm going to renounce this. I'm going to, I'm going to announce that. But in the spirit of Jesus, who has given me that authority, uh, we can do this now. We don't do it even separate from him. Um, that he's given us the words now. That's cool. I like that. It's awesome. This is an amazing gospel. Before we go, even though we've hardly gotten started, do you have a challenge? I don't know off the top of my mind. Do you have one? Actually, I do. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I do. Awesome. And I want to give it via a story. Oh, actually. Shelley, it's nice. Um, that brought a lot of uh, hope and life to my own heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think kind of, kind of is in theme with our gospel. Um, but basically I recently heard about this new play on Broadway. This is kind of a side effect of living in New York city. You kind of hear about it. Oh, we'll see it. Walking down the street. Yeah. Um, but it's called come from away. And I was like, what's that all about? And someone started telling me it's, it's so Mm -hmm. cool. It's a, it's based on a true story Uh and, uh, and it's surrounding the events of nine 11 and again, uh, a tragic day and um, a, a dark day, you know, for us as a nation and certainly for New Yorkers. And we feel that tangibly uh, even 20 years later. Um, but a 9-11 that after realizing what uh, the intent the, the terrorists had in, in mm-hmm. using airplanes as weapons, they closed the airfields. And so basically thousands of planes had to land immediately. Um, to airports that were closest to them, so they weren't going to make it to their ultimate destinations. And so, what happened is, thirty-eight planes uh, had to land. Wow! In this airfield in Gander, Newfoundland. And if you've never heard of Gander, it's because it really is on the edge of the earth, and it's this mm-hmm. sweet little 
edge of the earth type place with yeah. with good souls yeah. um a, a town of like 9000 and all of a sudden 38 planes land with 7000 passengers coming from over 95 countries oh my gosh just okay. the world on one island the, the world lands yeah. they call them the plane people hmm. and and basically um the the play captures really the the miracle um that that took place there that here in the shadow of such a tragic event um these planes land and these 9000 people of this town mm. they don't just like throw a sandwich at these people they opened their homes they opened their hearts these people came as strangers and they left as family this play captures uh hundreds of stories really of like the solid of solidarity mm. of of kindness of warmth of five days, because actually the town had to host these 7,000 passengers for five days. They were living in churches. They were living in oh. town halls. Um, people were just coming down to these places where all the, the plain people, they call them, were staying. And they were like, hey, who needs a shower? Like, come over to my house. Like, they opened their hearts and their homes mm -hmm. to these people. And and basically how transforming that was. Uh, that, yes, uh, on a day in which people acted in a way in such with such contempt for the human life, here, this town of people were putting the best of humanity on display mm -hmm. and actually transforming something that was difficult into, actually, there was new hope. There was marriages that came out of this whole event. Oh, there was that's awesome. lifelong bonds, um, in a sense, the power of love, yeah. right? The power of love is the greatest power. Mm -hmm. And I guess this story inspired me. It really inspired me Beautiful. to to mm -hmm. live with this openness of heart to the person before me, to cool. the person next to me, uh, this hospitality of heart as a way of actually casting out darkness, mm -hmm. of of casting out um, discouragement, um, the heaviness. There's such There can be such a heaviness that I think you know, these are these are days and times where, yeah, it's not too hard to find things to, yeah. to weigh your heart down, but that we can transform that for each other. Mm -hmm. And I think it is. It's sharing a taste of the resurrection. Um, well, sh beautiful. sharing a piece of that that mm -hmm. life that Christ uh, wants to communicate through us. So that's my dare is um, to reach out to the stranger, uh, mm -hmm. to to smile on your commute uh, today to work, mm -hmm. um, to to warm your heart up um, to your children. <laughs> to your husband, uh, yeah, to to your coworkers. Hard. That's it. I, lo I love that system. That's it. Yeah, I love it because it's not about being ready. It's about being open. Yeah, am I so open to. Yeah, am I open to it? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, what about you? Gosh, what you you make me think? Um, you know, I just love how in this gospel, um, when this dead man came out, he came. I just love that line. The dead man came out. When this dead man came out, he's responding to the call of Jesus again by name. And I can only imagine now, like Lazarus coming back to life, hearing his name spoken by the Lord Jesus, that this is like a new, it's, it's a new life for him, that he's just responding to the voice of Jesus from this point on. He's with Jesus. He's hearing him. Uh, it's literally that that voice has called him back into life. Uh, and I love that because I, I bet you his life is totally different after that, that, that he was just so... Um, transfixed and concerned about where Jesus was calling him next. And I, I love this because his healing journey, it's, it's uh, I don't know, is, is he's, you know, we're a week and a half out now from, you know, the beautiful Paschal mystery. And, um, you know, I can get kind of worked up of like, oh my gosh, last week and a half, let's like hustle down. Let's like get really, I don't know, like, let's kind of like pull out, you know, the, the long strides for the home stretch. And I just hear the Lord inviting us to like, you know, this 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 last week and a half is not about getting it done. It's about letting it be done to me. Like here is Lazarus. He can't he can't get out of this dead place on his own. And Jesus does it. And um Lazarus lets this beautiful work be done to him. And he responds to a name. He responds to a call. Um, and he's letting this voice be his life now, um, and be the sound and rhythm of his life. And I don't know. I just feel like this is an invitation to us to just let Jesus lead us this last week and a half, however it unfolds, you know, in the surprises and the unexpected ways. Yeah. And the ways that he calls us to love, um, just being open to the unexpected calls that Jesus wants to lead us to this last week and a half. Because again, he has a plan. He knows what it's going to look like. Uh, and he's going to call us uniquely, particularly by name. 
And really our role is just to be open to that, open that voice. So it's beautiful. Here we go. Let's listen up. Should we pray? Let's pray, sister. <laughs> Close this down. Pray? Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, we cry out to you as Father, as Jesus did before the tomb of Lazarus. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all the blessings that you are pouring out upon us, especially in this sacred time of Lent, the sacred season in the desert that you uh, persistently are driven with love to every avenue and aspect of our lives, every moment of our day. Any Whatever arena we find ourselves in, you are interested and on the move towards us to bring us to life, to nourish us, to find us, and to bring us home. And so, Father, we give you permission. We give you permission to send the gift of your Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our lives, into a very... Um, into our very being at this moment that depends on you for its next breath. We thank you for this gift that we um, have been given. We thank you for the people that walk on it with us. We thank you for the gift of journeying together this Lent, for you desire to remind us that we are never alone, alone from you, alone from one another. And so we give you permission, Jesus, just to come and call us by name, open our hearts to the gifts that you are giving us and help us, give us the grace to receive them, to claim them as our own, given from you personally. Let me just ask the, that Our Lady of the Desert, uh, who uh, walks this journey with us, be particularly close to us as we are drawn towards her son, Jesus, in these last days, that um, she teach us to be open, she show us Mary, that you show us how to be open. Help us to be open as you are always open. As we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, our Mother, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, sister. Cool. God bless you all. Be together. Happy Lent. God bless. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.